Welcome back, everyone. Uh, my guest reminded me that uh, when we first met, it was the brown hair era. <laughs> well, it's been a, that must mean it's been a few years, it's right, It's been a Gordon? few, yeah. I, we didn't just get this way <laughs> last right. week. We matured right. into that, right? Yes, I guess. exactly. This is Gordon Boyd, a friend of mine since the 70s, believe it or not, who's very involved with Bethesda Episcopal Church right here in Saratoga. And as you will see from some of the shots that Andrew's going to take, this is one of the most beautiful buildings I think I've ever been in, by the way. And, uh, you know, before we get into talking about Mercy House, uh, the word Bethesda is very interesting in what it means. And it has a lot to do with the, the real mission of this church, right? That's right. It, Bethesda uh, references a, a miracle by Jesus that's in the Bible where he was healing a crippled uh, individual at the pools of Bethesda, which were healing waters in Jerusalem at the mm -hmm. time. And so the founders of Bethesda, uh, Rockwell Putnam and others at the time in the early 19th century, because Saratoga was known for healing waters already, right, sure. they decided on the name Bethesda. There's only one other Bethesda in the country. I think it's down in Florida. But uh, Bethesda means literally house of mercy. Mm -hmm. And so Mercy House has been the new creation of Bethesda just in the last year to pursue this uh, mission in Saratoga of uh, caring for those in need. You know, and uh, we're going to talk about the mission. Um, uh, you've been involved with the church pretty much since you and I met which is in the 70s, right? Yes, yes. And in various roles. And most recently, I noticed from the business card you gave me, uh, president for Mercy House. Now, Mercy House is, uh, is going to be an annex that's built right next to the church here. And again, Andrew will show you some, some shots of that. Let's go back about five years mm -hmm. and uh, explain to me how this came about. Well, Bethesda, about going back five, six years, we had some properties here on Washington Street that were, you know, uh, beyond their useful life for us. We would have had to put a lot of capital in them to rehabilitate them and make them uh, useful to, you know, modern uh, members of the church. So we sold those two properties uh, to the Adelphi Hotel. We had another property over by Saratoga Lake that we sold. And so recapitalizing the parish, we decided to build on land that we own uh, adjacent to the church. Mm -hmm. And in order to build a parish house these days for any size of, uh, of church, uh, you, really see, you want to also create a mission for, for the parish that augments just looking after the parish. And so we, uh, look, we looked and thought about that for a few years and uh, about a year and a half, almost two years ago, we hit on housing as being a principal mission for the new parish house that would augment what we're doing for the parish as well. All right, well said. The um, housing, of course, if anybody who knows Saratoga, housing and I suppose parking, right? Well, we, our issue is, and I don't mean to make light of it, but housing is a serious problem in Saratoga. Uh, Gordon and I both remember when Saratoga wasn't quite as prosperous as it is today. And uh, because of the prosperity, which of course is, is good news, uh, it tends to leave some people behind, doesn't it? It does. I mean, the, we're, we're, I'm not, we're all in favor of, of prosperity and enterprise and all the good things that have happened here, but it is obvious to anybody that walks up and down Broadway that there are people that have been left behind. Uh, rents are higher, uh, property values are up. Uh, people are investing in property, but they're not uh, at the market rate anyway. They're not doing so to look after uh, all elements of the community. And our mission at Mercy House will be to look after uh, people who have disabilities, people who have suffered domestic violence, homeless military veterans with children, and uh, backstretch workers from the racetrack who may have been injured or are in, in recovery from uh, substance use disorders. Um, you identified some very, very important organizations in our town by saying that. Um, Wellspring comes to mind, yes. right? Veterans Coalition comes to mind. The backstretch, the thoroughbred backstretch. Right, right. and Transitional and, Services Association. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. okay. So you would be working with those organizations because they have clients and they have people that they're looking to place, correct? That's right. They, okay. have, they have clients that they're looking after. They would refer them to us. We really primarily want to be a landlord and a good one with security and, and good care for everybody that's in the building. Mm -hmm. But we're not the counselors and the caregivers and the health coordinators and all that. Those, that role remains with 
the organizations that we're working with. Yeah, you know, I think that's an important distinction because uh, the, those organizations are geared up for that. Yeah. In essence, you're going to them and saying, look, it's, we want to be part of the community, not just the parish, but we want right. to be part of the community, and here's what we can help. Here's, here's how, how we can, we can here's, what we, here's the role we can play, the, yes. the gap that we can fill. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel or duplicate other, other people's uh, responsibilities. Uh, would this be uh, rental? Yes, they would be rental apartments, so there'd be a couple of three-bedroom apartments, a couple of two-bedroom apartments, there'd be about a dozen one-bedroom apartments, and then the fourth floor will be a sort of a shared bedrooms and shared bathrooms uh, for the backstretch that will be uh, available at other times of the year for other purposes, but that's sort of communal space, if you will. So there's a variety of configurations. The individuals that would be coming in have the ability to get rent support vouchers through their uh, counseling organizations and that would allow us to get a, a way below market rent but one that will uh, meet our operating expenses. I've got it. Uh, knowing your interest in music right all these years uh, you were always involved with music series here I, yeah. I recall uh, so that community space will be then to have those kind of community events. Yes the, assume, there right? will be a space on the ground floor there's a dining hall for would seat 200 people It'll be a music training center uh, other rooms a library and archives where people can have AA meetings or other recovery programs could be going on there and mm -hmm. so we expect it will be a very active uh, uh, community and, uh, and the goal here is for the parish, the Saratoga community, and the people that are in residence at Mercy House to have things to do with each other that bring them together and not isolate uh, you know, people in need from people who have. Oh, uh, really back to the mission of, yeah. of the church, right? right. Um, the recently, uh, we had, uh, I called you because we uh, had, uh, saw about the $25,000 grant. Oh yeah. Um, how'd that happen? Well, our, our partners for the, uh, the communal space on the fourth floor is the Backstretch Employee Service Team. And that's an established organization that does health coordination and other uh, jobs for uh, 2,500 backstretch workers. They wanted this dormitory space for guys that are in recovery from alcohol or drug abuse or have been injured at the track. That, was, that, that commitment that we made in conjunction with BEST inspired the New York Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association to give what they describe as an initial gift of $25,000 uh, towards the capital cost of that space. And we will be putting a memorial there to the late trainer, Rick Violet, who was a very uh -huh. uh, big supporter of the backstretch and a successful trainer. And he died about a year ago from lung cancer after battle for many years. And he was a very uh, big leader in NYTHA, the Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. And so that gift was inspired through a number of different uh, channels, but uh, we're delighted to have that partnership. And it has certainly gotten notice, as you uh, indicate, uh, in the community. Uh, that I think it will be inspiring other people to support this uh, uh, mission as well. Uh, support is, is important here. Uh, Gord was telling me going to break ground in a couple of months, right? Well, in a few months. I wouldn't say yeah. a couple, but okay. you know, we're, we, we think we're on track to get to the finish line. We have a, a motivated donor who is uh, themselves undertaking a business uh, transaction. And as soon as that is available, the funds from that are available, they will be available to Mercy House and Bethesda, and we'll be able to go in and get our building permit and uh, forge ahead. Gotcha. And, and as members of the community, we can help and we can contribute. Uh, MercyHouseSaratoga.org. If you go there, you'll find out everything you need to know, right? right? That's right. Will there be any pictures of you with, you know, darker hair or anything? No, those have all been archived. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got a hold of the Bolster Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you as always, Gordon. Oh, it's a my and, pleasure, uh, Jesse. And really, congratulations to you and everybody involved here wow. at Bethesda for really just living up to the mission of, of the, everything that you just described. That's really it, It's fantastic. a very motivating mission, and it's uh, going to be very fulfilling when it's up and running. I got it. Okay. Thank you very much it's for the uh, coverage. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. See this interview again. You can head to our website, looktvonline.com. So did all the bells go off here because we were doing the interview? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. <laughs>